fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver, that go, big fellow. I'll Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding along the broken, rock-strewn ground near the stage trail when they saw two men sprawled motionless beneath the blistering hot sun. At the sound of the approaching hoofs of Scout and Silver, one of the men stirred slightly. His eyes were glazed. He was barely able to discern the horseman until the Lone Ranger and Tonto came quite close. If I can only raise my gun. But the weight of the gun was too much for the fast ebbing strength of the dying guard of a stagecoach. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, move. I'll see what can be done for him, Toto. You take a look at the other man. Let me do it. You come back to finish me. Steady, steady there. Go ahead, shoot me and be done with it. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm here to help you. Help me? Too late. Here, take a drink of water. How about that man, Toto? Yeah, dead. See about this man's wound, will you? I'm going fast. Who are you? I'm a friend. I want to know who shot you. I don't know. Why are you masked? I see the tracks of the stagecoach. Are you the driver? I'm the guard. Other beat. Beats the driver. Try to swallow some more water here. Can't do much, huh? Now take it easy. Otto's going to bandage your wound. Oh. Where's the stage? But they, they drove it away. I'm tired. It, it's getting dark Bandage not help, Kimasami. All right, Toto. Have you any idea who shot you? What? I said, have you any... <laughs> Toto. Him dead. He couldn't tell a thing about this. Toto, whoever killed these men should Wait, be... Kimasami. You look yonder. What? Rider come this way. Two rider. Yes, I see them. Get ready, Toto. We may have to fight them right here. Maybe killer, come back. No, put your guns away. One of those men wears a sheriff's badge. Oh, let well, me see it. He may think we shot these men, so be ready, Toto. We may have to get away in a hurry. Uh-huh. Me ready. Where will you are? Don't fight them out. Oh, 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 get your hands up. Go ahead, heist them. We'll get the drop on you. Fred, you take a look at those two. See how bad they're hurt. All right, Sheriff Bedford. They're both dead, Sheriff. They are, eh? Well, I reckon you ought to know. Take the guns, Red, and unmask that man. Don't try it, Red. Now, look here. We can start shooting you if you want us. We found one of those men still living, but too far gone to help. 
He talked, but he didn't know who did the shooting or made off of the stage. This has happened too often, mister. We're taking you into Ranceville. You can go peaceable or go horizontal, whichever you want. Now, Red, take his guns. That ratted, I don't like the way he stands there, Sheriff. He looks ready to jump me if I get too close. Take his guns. How about it, mister? Will you surrender? No. Uh, you see, Curly, you'll grab me and use me for a shield. How about it, Sheriff? Are you going to shoot me because I won't surrender? I'll take those guns. I'll have that mask. Then I'll take you into jail. But I hope... Uh, but let me go. Hey, Curly, Curly, look out. He can't you. I'll have your gun, uh, Sheriff. Let me go. Uh, Don't shoot me. Stand over there. How about your man, Toto? He got gone. Uh, you see what I meant, Curly? That masked man moved like grease lightning. I knew he was fast. I could tell it by the way he Shut up, Red. Sheriff, my apologies for being rough, but Never you were so... Never mind that stuff. Now that you've disarmed me and my deputy, I suppose you'll add our bodies to the corpses there in the ground, eh? I'll unload your gun. Do the same with the deputy's hardware, Toto. Ah, me sorry. Toto and I will be out of range before you can reload, Sheriff. You just wait. I'll get you, mister. I'll hang you for these murders. If we'd kill those men... You think we'd have waited for you to capture us? I'll enlist every man in Ranchville. We'll find you if we have to scour the entire county. We'll meet again. You bet we will. You won't jump me another time. <laughs> Your gun, Sheriff. Come on. Get him up. Come on. Get him up. Come on. Get him up. Meanwhile, far off in another direction, six horses, cruelly driven, pulled a bouncing stage across ground that was too hard and rocky to show tracks. Two men rode on the stage, and six more rode alongside. All right, Dirk, rain up here. Right. This place is as good as any. Rain up, boys. Get it. There. Yeah, sure got away with this cargo in neat order, huh, Dick? Yeah, we sure enough did, Blackie. As far as I know, we left both the guard and driver dead. Dead and mighty close to it. Don't matter anyhow. They didn't get a look at our faces. Come on, boys. Get the mailbags off the stage. All right, come on, boys. Hurry it up and don't stand around waiting for instructions. You know what you're to do. Well, it was a lot easier to take the whole stage and to unload it and tote the mailbags and the horses. Unhitch the horses, Doug. Right. Now give me a hand. While the boys are examining the mail, we'll set fire to the stage. All right, Blakey. Too bad we can't use these horses. No, they're not saddle horses. I reckon we'll just have to leave them go. How about those mail sacks? Well, we got almost all of them off the stage. Cut them open, then. I want to go through the mail. Blackie, the leader of the group, hurriedly went through the mail, selecting letters that looked as though they might hold money. Meanwhile, Dirk finished unhitching the horses. Get going! You two get! Get along there! Go on there! Well, that takes care of them. How about the mail, Blackie? Well, we'll get enough out of this to make the whole up worthwhile. Good. When we first started, I figured maybe Big Bill was stringing us along. He knows better than to do that. Now, how many stages does he want us to take over and destroy? He didn't say. Hey, doggone. Look at the cash fold money in this here letter. Must be close to $500 here. Good. Put it with the rest, and when we're all done, we'll whack up and burn the rest of the mail when we burn the stagecoach. Hey, Blackie, maybe we could go to Big Bill and tell him there wasn't any cash on the stage. Then we could tell him he'd have to pay us if he wants us to keep on with this robbing and whaling. Dirk, it don't pay to try tricks with a man like Big Bill. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. He'd never have got as far as he is if he could be taken in by gents like us. He's doggone smart. A man has to be smart to be a lawyer and a banker like Big Bill. Well, just why does he want us to do this to the stagecoaches? I didn't ask him. Well, I don't see what he gets out of it. I don't either. But you can bet your boots he'll get plenty out of it in one way or another. <laughs> I bet Jim Mosley be hit hard by today's work. The Lone Ranger and Toto tried without success to follow the tracks of the stolen stagecoach over hard-packed rocky ground. Then they made camp, where the masked man decided on a plan of action. He reached into his saddlebags and pulled out clothing. Clothes of an Easterner, Toto. They're all I have here. Mm, that make good disguise, Kimasabi. It will do as well as any. I'll try to look like an Eastern businessman. Mm, that's right. Here, put my shirt away, will you? Uh, me do. Tuck the mask in the pocket. Uh-huh. 
I'm going to go into Ranceville and see what I can learn about this stagecoach robbery. Now, let the owner give information. Jim Mosley? Uh. I'd like to help him, Tonto. It would be like repaying a debt. He once helped the Texas Rangers. And me, no. I'll have to have a reason for asking him questions. Oh, hand me that fancy vest, will you? Ah, uh, here. Here, Basque. Oh, thanks. I might pose as an Easterner who's interested in buying the stage line or a share of it. Yes, I think that's what I'll do. Gail Mosley was on the porch when her father came home from the office of the stage line. The girl knew by Jim's dragging step that he looked on the situation as hopeless. I'll tell you before you ask me, Gail. They'll never find that stagecoach. It's gone. The boys have been looking everywhere and no tracks. Oh, Dad. I reckon I... we'll wait. Dad, you can't talk like that. You're Jim Mosley. They used to call you fighting, Jim. You can't be licked by the loss of a stage. What about the murder of the garden driver? I know, Dad, but even Gail, so... Gail, I haven't I... told you, but trouble has been building up for the past month. This isn't the first stage I've lost. There's been others. Dad, I didn't know that. Two or three of them last week. Now, I know what's behind it. It's that eastern critter that wants to buy me out. You told me the bank had spoken to you about selling the stage line, but yes, I... Yes, that's right, honey. And he said his client in the East was downright persistent. He hinted a couple of weeks ago that Turner might come here to make trouble for me if I didn't sell out. Then you think these criminals have been sent to make trouble for you by Mr. Turner? That's what I think, Gail. And I'm not the only one to think so. Big Bill Carlton, the banker, suspects the same. But can't you fight him? Oh, honey, how can I fight a man that works from the East and hires... Well... Looks like a stranger coming this way, Dad. Why, Thunder Gay, look at that gent. He's an Easterner. He looks like one. Oh, there, oh, he's Easterner. Are you Jim Mosley? That's my name. Bigfoot. You're the man I want to talk to. The Lone Ranger's disguise was perfect. He made a very convincing looking Eastern businessman as he walked up the steps to Mosley's veranda. Mosley squinted suspiciously as he eyed the tall stranger. Why do you want to see me, mister? I'd like to talk about buying out your stage line. But, so that's it. So you're the critter. By thunder, you're John Turner that's been making all the trouble for me. Trouble for you? You can't fool me, Turner. You tried to get the banker to negotiate a deal for you. When he couldn't do it, you came out here. Well, I won't sell this line. I built her up from nothing. Fought Redskins all the way from here to St. Joe to keep my franchise. I won't sell out, you hear that? Yes, I hear it. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. By Juniper, I am glad you came here. At last we can have the showdown. I hope it come. You want a showdown, huh? <laughs> the same old fighting Jim I've heard about. And you taught me a new way to fight. When you couldn't scare or bluff me into selling out, and I suppose you handled things your own self instead of letting Big Bill handle them for you. You hired killers. You made off with my stages and you shot my friends. Dad, you can't make such charges without proof. I'm calling you, Turner. Yes, I heard you. You turned to gunplay to get what you wanted. Well, two can play at that game, Turner. Dad, in the name of mercy, stop. That's gun talk. That's just what it's meant to be. You got a gun under that there coat of yours, mister. I can see the butt end sticking out. Dad, stop. One minute, fighting Jim. I'd One like... minute, nothing. You made the rules of the game, Turner. And the rules include gun smoke. Let's have the show down here and now. Reach for that shooting iron. It's you or me. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger, disguised as an Easterner, approached Mosley in the hope of learning more about the troubles of the stage line, he was mistaken for a man named Turner. You heard me, Turner. Reach for that gun. What if I don't draw, Jim? Then I'll shoot you anyway. I'm drawn right now. Just the way you did when you fought in a General Custer. What? What? And the way you did when you helped the Texas Rangers clean out those smugglers at the border. And the way you wait, did on... Wait, hold, hold on now. How did you know about those times? You couldn't shoot a man who won't draw his gun to defend himself, Jim. No, not you. Why, who, who the Sam Hill... Who are you? Jim, I'm not from the East, and my name's not Turner. But Big Bill Carlton, the banker, he said... I want to talk to Bill Carlton. I want to know more about Turner. But who are you? I'm from Texas. Dad! You hear that? I was with your guard and driver yesterday, just after they'd been shot. The guard died in my arms. Oh. The sheriff wanted to arrest me for the murder. That's why I came here in disguise. But why are you interested in my troubles? Because you helped the Texas Rangers, Jim. Now sit down and give me some facts. It was the next day when Mosley entered Banker Carlton's office. Come in, come in. Yeah, you've sure been having a run of hard luck, Jim. I'm mighty sorry. Yep, hard luck is right. Sit down, Jim. Thank you. Must have hit you hard when your guard and driver were killed. Yeah, sure did. You know, Jim, I was talking to the sheriff about that. He says he and his men practically caught the killers. Masked man and Indian. But they got away. Bill, you hinted that this Easterner named Turner would go a long way to get my stage line. Well, of course, he's interested in the franchise. He'd like to put stages of his own along the route. Well, that franchise is worth a heap to me. You think Turner would go as far as this to get it? Well, there's no way to prove Turner had a hand in the things that have happened. I think you're up against something you can't fight. Well, that's why I'm here, Bill. You're a good businessman, and I want your advice. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you suggest? Jim is a friend of yours, and as a businessman. I suggest you take a fair deal and sell out to Turner. Uh, what is a fair deal? Well, you know what Mr. Turner offered. Well, that wasn't a fair price. Why, the horses and rolling stock alone are worth more than he offered. Well, you've had some losses since his offer. Maybe you'll have to take less than he offered. Less? Why, he would Jim, your stock and equipment isn't worth as much as you think. Especially to a man like Turner, who intends to buy a lot of new stagecoaches. Well, it's worth more than he offers. Shall I write him and tell him you still refuse to accept his terms? You write him and tell him to come out here and make a deal with me. Come out here? That's what I said. I'm willing to listen to terms, but... He's got to come here to make him. <laughs> but, Jim, Mr. Turner's a busy man. He's a long way off. He's asked me to represent him in negotiations with you. When I do business with a man, it's face to face. That's always been my style. All right. But it may take several weeks for him to get here. I can wait. <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Tonto remained in the vicinity of Ranceville. Each day, Tonto went into town, and each night he returned to the well-concealed camp with a report. Still no word about Turner, huh, Tonto? No. Him not come yet, but to him on way. Is that what the banker said? Not right. Tonto, if our trap works, we'll have the biggest crook in this part of the country. A crook who has been posing as an honest banker for a long time. Mm, not right. You think plan work? With Jim Mosley on our side, willing to help us, we'll get Bill Carlson one way or another. I think we'll get him by forcing his hand. Oh, uh, you know when Mr. Turner is to arrive? Well, him's supposed to come 10th of the month. Thanks, Toto. We'll plan accordingly. During the next two weeks, the sheriff's men located the burned remains of Mosley's stagecoach, but sought in vain for the bandits who had stolen it and killed the guard and driver. Mosley's other stages ran on schedule uneventfully. Toto continued to scout the town paying particular attention to all who visited the bank. It was on the morning of the 8th that the Indian saw a stranger go in to call on Banker Carlton. Then Tonto moved stealthily to the rear window of the office. The window was closed, but the Indian, listening outside, caught significant parts of the conversation. So you see, Blackie, I've got to have an Easterner aboard the stagecoach to reach his ranch bit on the tent. Yeah, I can see where you have to... <laughs> Yeah, fighting Jim sort of crossed you up when he insisted that Turner deal face to face with him. Ah, uh, the old fool. Well, I don't know as I'd call him an old fool, Carlton. It's 
Strikes me he's a pretty sharp old man. If he'd deal like a businessman and negotiate with if me... If he would, it'd be ten times as easy for you to carry out your bluff about an Easterner named Turner wanting the stage line. Well, the whole point is just this, Blackie. You've got to take the part of Mr. Turner. Hmm? You'll have to ride east as far as Parksville, and then change into Easterner's clothes and board the stage. That's a little out of my line. I know that. Gunplay, that's all right. But acting a part, that's something different again. You can do it. Yeah, I can. If the price is right. You've always been paid well. And always expect to be. You'll have to lay out $500 for my part, Carl. What? Well, that's robbery. <laughs> that's my line. 100 is plenty for what you'll do. Well, then find yourself someone else. I, I can't. All right. All right. You'd be ready to leave here tonight. Now, as to the details of my negotiations with, uh, I should say, your negotiations with old Jim. That evening, when Toto met his masked friend, he had news. He reported what he had learned that day. That's what we've been waiting for, Toto. I'll saddle Silver. And what we do, Kenny. Steady there, boy, steady. I'll meet you later, Toto. I'm going to call on Jim Mosley and ask him to call on Sheriff Bedford. A moment later, the masked man leaped to the saddle and called out to his great horse, Silver. On Silver! He went directly to town and to the rear door of Jim Mosley's home. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy, steady, big fella. Concealed by darkness, he dismounted and rapped on the door. It was Mosley himself who responded. Jim. Great day, mask. I wore the clothing of an Easterner the last time we talked. Well, that voice is familiar. You once called me Turner. That's it. But those clothes, that mask... You'll soon wear a mask, Jim, and so will the sheriff. He jumped to the conclusion that he was dealing with an outlaw and a killer because I wore a mask. But he's going to learn that there are times when a mask is not the mark of an outlaw. Well, I, I don't savvy. Tomorrow, Jim, you're to call on Sheriff Bedford. You're going to ask him to help you get the men who killed your garden driver and the man who hired them. Now listen to what I have to say. On the morning of the 10th, Jim Mosley went to the office of the sheriff. You said you'd help out if there was a chance of getting the critters that killed the guard and driver. So I will, Jim. No matter what you have to do? No matter what. All right, then. That's a promise. My friend is waiting out back. I'll call him. Hey, mister, come on in here. Sheriff is ready. Good enough. Hello, Sheriff. Uh, you! Are you the man I'm not? Sheriff. We're going out, and you and Jim will both wear masks. What? I'll take my word for it, Sheriff. This man's all right. But uh, me wearing a mask. Now, Sheriff, you promised. All right, then. I promised I'll see it through. What are we to do? Jim will tell you while I go and get Toto. Now, Sheriff... We've got to pose as stage robbers and stop the westbound that's supposed to bring Mr. Turner here. <laughs> For what? The saying is, uh, set a crook to catch a crook. And that's just what it amounts to, Sheriff. But let me tell you something else. I know who that masked man is. Uh, who is he? Uh, I'll tell you when his hand is played. Two days later, four men waited by the stage trail some distance east of Ranceville. One was an Indian. The other three wore masks. Well, here comes the stagecoach. Are you ready, Sheriff? Ready as ever will be. It's a long time since I went out with horse and gun. <laughs> My thunder, I'm enjoying it. It's getting close. All right, come on. Let me do the talking. Come on, sir. Get him up. Get him. Get him. Right up there. Get off that seat. Where are the passengers? Well, we got one. He's... Get out, stranger. Now, wait. Hold Hurry on. it up. Get off that seat. You guard, driver, passenger. Three of you line up. Quickly, oh, quickly. Hold on now. Let me speak. We've had our orders. What do you mean you've got orders? <laughs> Who gave you orders? The big boss. I'm sorry, but he doesn't want us to leave survivors. You mean you're going you to... You can't get... gun us down like this? Who can't? Now, listen here a minute, mister. Yeah? Let me ask just one thing. Did you get orders to burn this stage? How did you guess it? This is your first job for the big boss, isn't it? You seem to be well informed. Of course I am. I know who your boss is. I've worked for him. Are you the one who went to Parksville to change into the clothing of an Easterner? Yes, yes, sure I am. 
I wonder if he's telling the truth. I am telling the truth. Hey, listen, what's his talk mean? The big boss figured one more stage burned up would clinch a certain deal he had in mind. Uh, you know what that deal is? I can tell you all about it. Yeah? The boss wants to buy the stagecoach line. <laughs> Old man Mosley wouldn't sell in spite of all the losses he'd had unless he dealt with a buyer direct. I'm acting the part of the buyer. Then you've been working for Carlton all along. That's right. Well, you've got to believe me. He sounds as if he's talking straight, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. Maybe he can prove it some more by telling us who headed the last raid. I can tell you, I handled it myself. The boys who were with me are camped out in Broad Basin. You were paid by Carlton? That's right. By thunder, that's all I wanted to know. What, uh, I'm through with this here mask. Jim Mosley. Fighting Jim Mosley, owner of the stagecoach line. And here's a sample of my fighting. No, no hold it, Jim. Not that way. The frame oh, let me at that no, critter. No, let no, me no, at him. Hold on, Jim. Hold on. The law will take care of him, as well as Carlton and the rest of the gang. Uh, get on your feet, Blackie. It's a frame up. That's what it is. You'd never have caught me dressed like this, talking my way into trouble if you hadn't come wearing masks and posing as crooks. Get back on the stage. Now, right alongside and see that you get where you're going. Then we'll see that the rest of the crooks go with you. Gosh, I never suspected you were the sheriff. I thought you were highwaymen. Carry on from here, Sheriff. Well, leave it to me. I'll see that Carlton pays back everything in full before he goes to jail. Good enough. Come on, Dolo. Get him up. Come. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, just uh, one question. What's that, Sheriff? Who is that masked man? Well, great day. I thought you'd guess. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs>